come and play with my toys. Good luck, good morning to everybody. We should uh, start this off with a little bit of Jewish history. At the foot of Mount Sinai, there were 12 tribes to the Jewish people. Later on in our history, 10 of those tribes became lost, and the remaining two tribes have recently been discovered to be alive and well in New York City. One of the tribes is called Shimon, the other one called Garfunkel. <laughs> of the tribe of Garfunkel, there's a descendant who lives next to the golf course on the outskirts of Orlando, Florida. And this first song is just about him. He stood five foot ten in his double knit slacks, checking all the merchandise on his racks. With an alligator sewed to his golfing shirt, everybody knows he don't give no dirt to Jack Schwartz. <laughs> Every morning at dawn, you could see him arise in suburbia from a bed king size with a golf bag made from fine leather soft everybody knows you don't tee off Jack Schwartz when young Kipper arrived he just wasn't seen he was out putting around on the 13th green he knew how to swing he knew how to slice he was golfing away his good Jewish life Jack Schwartz. Well, we're all going to miss his beloved soul. Lightning struck in the 14th hole. His life was just a big sand trap because he never overcame his handicap. Jack Schwartz. And there's a tombstone now by the 18th hole where they buried his dearly departed soul. And I guess it had to happen sooner or later. He was buried in a tulus with an alligator. <laughs> Jack Schwartz. Oh, Jack Schwartz. Oh, Jack Schwartz. Oh, Jack Schwartz. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to reintroduce myself to all of you, if I may. <coughs> my name is Moshe Yes. My last name is spelled Y-E-S-S. -S. The second S is silent. <laughs> Whenever I tell people my name, they usually ask me two questions. The first one is, um, is yes really uh, your last name? The answer to that is yes. <laughs> My grandfather was born in Lodge, Poland, where the family name was Yaish or Yaich, we're not certain. And he immigrated to England seems that the immigration officer in England couldn't spell Yaish or Yaich. So he wrote down Y-E-S-S. -S. And that's how I have this ridiculously stupid last name. <laughs> Freaks people out whenever. What's your name again? That's your real The second question I'm always asked by people is, were, 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 were you always religious? Answer to that is no. Because what happened to you? I kind of got tired of having to tell my story over and over and over again. 
so for the sake of saving time, I put my story into a simple song, which I sing over and over and over. <laughs> neighborhood. 
And there's a rabbi in a long black coat, the first one I had seen in way too many years. Conversation between us went something like this. I said, excuse me, rabbi. I have been doing some research into the second temple period of our people's history. Wouldn't you be kind enough to tell me, please, where did the Levites store the musical instruments in the second temple? First of all, the rabbi looked at the pointed red kawanuts, quickly glanced at the faded blue jeans, and paid particular attention to the dangling participle on the front of the leather cowboy hat, and said two words to me I will never forget. He said to me, You Jewish? <laughs> I said, Certainly. He said, Did you put on chillin' today? No. Come here, you. And he slaps me to the back of the shul and he wraps me up in Tefillin. That's his job. He's a Lubavitcher rabbi. He was Rabbi Neftali a student. Anyway, to make a long story interminable, I said, <laughs> Rabbi, listen, it's been many years since I've been in the shul. I'm feeling pretty rusty as a Jew. I don't know what to do. He says, I'll come to shul to wear off the rust real quick. I'll tell you the truth, it was awkward the first few times not knowing what to do. And it was from that feeling of awkwardness that this next song found its inspiration. I got the one page are we all in the prayer book blues. Am I supposed to sit or stand in a synagogue blues? Well, my folks sent me to Hader when I was just a child. But instead of learning all of these, I was out there running wild. I got the one page I we on in the prayer book blues. The guy right next to me, he's taking a snooze. I don't know what I'm reading. I don't know what to speak. God spoke to us in Hebrew. But to me, the thing is green. I got my kid knows less than me in the prayer book blues. And it's not too nice to see in the synagogue blues. So it's a hater for you young men. Learn your olive bees. Don't you dare take after me with egg all on your face. I got the what they job we own in the prayer book blues. Am I supposed to sit or stand in the synagogue blues? Well, I guess I'll see you later, cause I'm going back to Hater. I got the one page job we own in the prayer book blues. Da 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 da! Hey, what page job we own in the prayer book blues? Da 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 da! Hey, what page job we own in the prayer book blues? Thank you. Eight years before I met the rabbi, I had taken upon myself the commitment to learn how to sing American country music. If there's anyone in this audience tonight who has a secret fantasy to become the next Kenny Rogers, Garth Brooks, Dolly Parton. <laughs> I'm going to save you eight years of non-stop travel and by the time you leave this wonderful building tonight you will know the only three things that need to be known in order to successfully perform country music in front of people. Lesson one pertains to the guitar. Every country song that's ever been written or will come to be written has the same first chord on the guitar. It is this one. Lesson number two. Every country song that's ever been written or will come to be written has the same first word. It is this one. Lesson number three is a little bit more subtle. 
soul if you want to successfully sing a country song in front of people. You gotta convey a certain amount of what I call countrified attitude. You gotta mosey on up to the microphone like you just got down off your horse. You want the folks to believe that you've lived a rough and tumbled life which has left its mark on your face with many wrinkles, so you squint your eyes to add to the wrinkles in the corner there. You also want the folks to believe there's a certain amount of a mean streak inside of you, so you snarl at the good people in the first couple of rows. Before you pronounce the first word, for dramatic effect, you look up about 60 degrees to the right. So in its most pristine format, this is how this is done. Well, the first time I tried doing this professionally was in a city called Minot, North Dakota. Avoid it. It's not exactly the cultural hub of the Western Hemisphere. I was there at a place called the Club 52. And you and your grandchildren should never go from such a place. And there I was up on stage in front of real life cowboys and Indians about to make my country music debut. When all of a sudden, to my surprise, my Jewish heritage got in the way and caused me to stumble. This is what happened in my night. <laughs> Well, <laughs> cowboys started scratching their heads. What's with the weirdo up on the stage, Luke? I don't think he's one of us, Chuck, so I got desperate. Thought maybe I'd try a Hasidic approach. <laughs> no. <laughs> that did not work. Anyway. So just to show you I'm not making this all up, we're going to do the country song which had a spiritual message for me. You can find spiritual messages in many different places. For me, it was going to be a spiritual message that would be very relevant eight years later when I met the rabbi in L.A. What was I going to let go of and what was I going to replace it with? <laughs> on a warm summer's evening On a train out of nowhere I met up with a gambler We were both too tired to sleep We took turns to stare
the vacuum that was in my life. A few months go by, and one day, again, I walk into the synagogue, and I said to him, Rabbi Naftali, he goes to me, Moshe? I go, yes. I said, Rabbi Naftali, I have to go to Israel. He looks me in the eye and he says to me, Moshe? I go, yes. <laughs> it's in your heart, you're going to do it. And sure enough, a couple of months later, yours truly is standing in our holy city of Yerushalayim after having bought a one-way airplane ticket. I was very fortunate. I found a one-bedroom, humble apartment in a part of the city called Kuhula. The apartment had air conditioning. A window with no glass in it. <laughs> one of these indoor, outdoor decorating schemes that's indigenous to that neighborhood. I'm not complaining. I enrolled into a Baal Tshuva Yeshiva, in case there's someone here who may not know what that is. It's a place where a person later on in life can acquire some basic Jewish skills. I'll tell you more about that later. And from becoming acquainted for the first time with the beauty of my Jewish religion, it was only natural to take the different styles of music I had learned back in California and to adapt them with a Jewish message expressing the beauty of our faith. And to this day, after some 13 albums can I know her, and more times in airplanes than I can remember, this next song is still the one. <laughs> My Zadie lives with us in my parents' home. He used to laugh, he put me on his knee. And he spoke about his life in Poland. He spoke, but with a bitter memory. And he spoke about the soldiers who would beat him and they laughed at him they tore his long black coat and he spoke about a synagogue that they burnt down and the crying that was heard beneath the smoke that same made us laugh Satan made us sing, and Satan made a kiddish crying rain. And Zadie, oh my Zadie, how I love him so. And Zadie used to teach me wrong from right. His eyes lit up when he would teach me Torah. And he taught me every line so carefully. And he spoke about our slavery in Egypt And how God took us out to make us free But winter went by Summer came along I went to camp to run and play And when I came back home they said, Zadie's gone, and all his books were packed and stored away. And I don't know how or why it came to be. It happened slowly over many years. We just stopped being Jewish like my Zadie was. And no one cared enough to shed a tear. But Satan made us laugh, Satan made us sing, and Satan made a Seder taste of night. And Zadie, oh my Zadie, how I love him so. And Zadie used to teach me wrong from right. And many winters went by, and many summers came along. 
now my children sit in front of me and who will be the city of my children who will be their city if not me who will be the cities of our children who will be their cities if not we and say made us laugh say made us sing and say made a kiddish Friday night
Now, it's not my intention to, God forbid, slander Jewish music in front of all of you tonight, but rather to share with you again that our music has always been influenced by the perimeter music that we find ourselves living in. Case in point is this Jewish summer camp song, Hine Matobu Manai. About three years ago, I was invited to Sao Paulo, Brazil. First time south of the equator there, South America. There was an English-speaking Jewish students union at the university. They brought me down. I spoke to the kids. They told me that in the summertime, the Jewish parents also send their kids to prison. I mean to Jewish summer camp. And they too sing, He Nema Tovrunai. Same kind of situation, you know, can't smoke food. Brasilia, sitting around a fireplace, warm, balmy night, little iguanas skirting all over the place in the rainforest there, spiritual bonding. But notice how the local music has affected their version of this song. This is how they do it, same song in Brazil. <laughs> Hats is in a window in a store on 8th Avenue in New York City. A 
the concert tour. Calling out to me. Hey, you with a stumbling new beard. I'm for you. So I bought the hat. And between the hat and the beard, an experience that in my life I'll probably have to suffer through forever. No matter where I go publicly, total strangers walk up to me with this. Anybody ever tell you that you look like the guy from Thither on the Roof? <laughs> no, sir. No, no. First person ever to tell me that. In the last 12 minutes, you're the first individual to bring that. Now, this next song requires the participation of the entire audience, if I can impose upon all of you, please. There are two things I need you to do for me. The first one is very simple. It goes like this. Clap, 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 clap. Okay, okay, okay. I, I know you can do it. I, 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 you've proven yourself. But we'll call upon you to do that in just a second. But the second part is difficult. When I point to the audience, would everyone here please give me a nice, loud, genuine, juicy, from your Yiddish or Kishkes, an honest to goodness, Oi! Just like that. When I point to you. Oi! Together. Tighten it, please. One, two, three. Oi! Where's my clapping people? <laughs>
any baseball fans here tonight? Thank you. This, uh, this next song is uh, rather unique. There's not too many songs like this. This is a Jewish country and western baseball song. You don't find many songs that fall into those three categories simultaneously. Now, this song requires the participation of the audience. If you happen to hear the name of your favorite baseball team, I would sincerely appreciate it if you would become extroverted as if you were at the stadium and make some noise expressing your support of your baseball team of your choice. I'm going to test you out. You've got three choices. Here we go. <coughs> Yankees. Oh. <laughs> Dodgers. Oh. Mets. Oh. White Sox. Yeah. Okay, I have to change the lyric of the song. <laughs> Flat push on. When we were young and Sheila boys way back in 65 We were known throughout the city as the bombs from the east side In school we never studied, all we did was laugh and play And no revenue ever lasted long, they all just ran away Revy tried to teach us Torah each and every day. We just closed our eyes and ears to everything he'd say. And all we liked to do was sit and watch our TV stats. We talked about the Yankees Ooh. and the White Sox yeah. and the Mets. <laughs> well, the principal brought the new Revy in. First day out of the term, and he said to him, show discipline, be strong, tough, and firm. Don't think these youngsters run the school. He set up a big frown. By the way, for the next few weeks, I'm going out of town. <laughs> well, did you ready? He was strange. He never lost his cool. He kept right on teaching while we broke all the rules. Even though we hadn't learned a single thing all year, it was pace on time already, and that Remy was still here. Remy tried to teach us Torah each and every day. We just closed our eyes and ears to everything he'd say, and all we liked to do was sit and watch our TV sets. We talked about the Yankees. <laughs> White Sox. Yeah. The Mets. <laughs> well, when Lodge for Homer came around, it was time for the big game. Against those boys from Brooklyn, how we prayed and shouldn't rain. All nine of us got on the bus without gloves and back. Remy also came along with his jacket tie and hat. Right from the start, we all could see things were going right. Some big strong kid from Bensonhurst would get one out of sight. Just as things were looking up and the tide about to turn, our catcher went and broke his leg while sliding in the third. It's a forfeit cry the other team. You only got eight guys. No, we don't. A deep voice said, much to our surprise. And since I am their remedy, the fair thing it would seem, let me be the ninth man, ninth man in the team. Remy went, picked up the bat, faced the pitcher with a smile. <laughs> Knocked the cover off the ball, went about half a mile. He flew around the bases, and he scored the winning run. And we danced and cheered until he said, Now, boys, you owe me one. <laughs> well, 
on the next day in the classroom, no one moved and no one stirred. Mm -hmm. Remy started teaching, and his voice it could be heard. We all said, hey, it's interesting. The man, he is no bore. The legendary Eastside bombs were gone forevermore. Remy used to teach us Torah each and every day. We opened up our eyes and ears to everything he'd say. And no more did we sit all day and watch our TV sets. Uh -huh. We talked about Rashi and the Tosifus. I know he's up. <laughs> I'm 
David Brew back on the keyboard, ladies and gentlemen. Guys, I'm gonna fly please be done. I wanna thank the Mormon Tabernacle Choir for all the vocals. <laughs> The program is being brought to you by the CBS Television Network and broadcast to our Armed Forces Station. What's the matter with me? Okay, let's get back to reality. Uh, you all heard of Louis Armstrong? Louis Armstrong was one of the true jazz greats in American musical history. And before he passed away, Louis went to Jerusalem. And as most visitors do, he went to the Western Wall, where he was immediately approached by a Lubavitcher rabbi. Twenty-two minutes later, he was in yeshiva. <laughs> and he was studying, they put him in a class, where a Chumash class, where they were studying Parshas Mayach, you know, the story of Noah and the Flood. And, Louis was so inspired by this biblical narrative that he wrote a jazz interpretive piece for it that I found when I was in the same she was library a few years later. If anyone believes what I've just told them, I'd like to meet with you after the performance time. I have a bridge I'd like to discuss with you in East Beirut. Surefire uh, real estate project. Uh, had the late great Louis gone through this experience and written such a jazz piece, it, in all likelihood it would have come out like this. Oh, I forgot. Would you all uh, snap, 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 snap? Pretty snappy group you got here at Skokie, Rabbi my Pretty, pretty snappy group. Don't the earth smell sweet when the rain stops beating down? Yeah, don't the earth smell sweet when the rain stops beating down? I've been moved to reconsider my fears and better memories of parties on the wrong side of town. For 40 days, it's going to rain. The wicked have profane. It's a warning to my chance. You know it's going to rain for 40 days. 40 days, 40 nights. If you want to keep afloat, you better build yourself a boat. People got to learn what's wrong from right. The rain came down, it was beating on the ground. There were no treetops in sight. The days went by, and Noah said, Oh, me, oh, my. I sure hope I built my boat right. For your days, for the nights. Well, people got to learn what's wrong from right. No, the earth smells sweet when the rain stops beating down. Of my fears and bitter memories of parties of the wrong side of town. The rain it stopped, window popped open, the bird made his way to land. He flew back once, never flew out again, came back with a dollar branch in hand. For the days, for the nights, where people have learned what's wrong from the right. Don't the earth smell sweet when the rain stops
I'll leave you with this. People say to me, Moshe. I go, yes. <laughs> what inspires you to write a song? Well, I'm going to tell you about this song. Song coming up. This song was inspired by an experience at a bus stop. I was alone at a bus stop. I have a hang up. I don't like city buses. And uh, I'm alone at this bus stop. All of a sudden, the bus comes up, and there's two other passengers only on this bus. Two rather elderly Jewish women seat, seated on the long bench seat behind the bus driver. And as I walk onto the bus and give them my transfer, and walk towards the empty back of the bus. One of the women whispers to her friend, He's wearing senses. And the other one whispers back, Does he have to have such a big beard? Boy, was I inspired to write a song. I don't want to change my name I got nothing to be ashamed of I got no secrets for you Cause I came to the world this way And I'm going to have to say I want to live my life as a Jew, I'm a Jew, I'm a Jew, and I got nothing to apologize to you. I'm a son of Abraham, and I believe in the promised land. Shouldn't you? Thank you. 
Uncle Abe flew in from Cincinnati And Becky drove up from Miami Beach The rabbi was watching with a tear in his eye As David Cohen read his bonnets for speech As David Cohen read his bonnets for speech I want to thank the rabbi, my mother, and my father I am a man by Jewish law. I accept all of my Jewish obligations. I acknowledge that there is only one God. I acknowledge that there is only one God. That was the last time David Cohen saw a rabbi. And his Thomas and his children, they got lost. And he's now a lawyer up in Sacramento And looking back it wasn't worth the cost And looking back it wasn't worth the cost I want to thank the rabbi, my mother and my father Today I am a man by Jewish law I accept all of my Jewish obligations I acknowledge that there is only one God. I acknowledge that there is only one God. Sensitive to these things. 
one of the things that I noticed almost immediately was a great similarity in the musical scales that you find in the native music of Israel, the Sephardi, Tehmani music. <laughs>
six crunches flavors in one great crunch. Great grains, the new great grains. Getting married invites.